Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, today, I want to talk about the evolution of Japanese art during the Meiji era as a double mind situation in art. So, um, Japanese culture is famous throughout the world today, and much of this culture has its roots during the Edo period. This period is known to be a period of intense cultural development, particularly due to the fact that Japan refocused himself on himself and closing his door to foreigners. Um, among this culture, we think in particular on this imagination about uh, samurai and ninja, and uh, Shinto and Buddhist religious practice and festival, but also uh, prince and more generally uh, Japanese art. So the best known example is Sori Ukiyo-e, and, um, and these prints which are known throughout the world, such as the such as, such as the prints of Katsushika Hokusai uh, and the uh, Utagawa Hiroshige, and in particular, in particular, this one too. So, um, in in 1868, uh, Japan entered a new era called the Meiji era, and this era, which only lasted until uh, 1912, uh, was an era of cultural changes for Japan. Uh, since uh, opening up to the world, Japan has discovered the extent of Western technologies, as discoveries will change in various fields such as medicine, the army, politics, and also art and culture. Uh, so quickly, uh, Japanese Japan, uh, which used printing system dating from the 16th uh, century discovered the latest uh, technological advance in printing. So woodblock printing, uh, lithography, photography, and everything changes the cultural habit of the Japanese uh, to the point that uh, Japanese prints sell much less. Labor is too expensive and too slow, and um, if, even if his art is uh, popular in Europe, that is not enough. The Ukiyo-e art movement continued to exist until the end of the 19th century, but lost uh, its popularity. So, this trend in Western culture which is entering Japanese society is in matter of debate ab about um, among Japanese thinkers and artists. So, should, should we keep and preserve mm -hmm. traditional Japanese art, even if, it, even if it's perceived as a belonging to another era? Where should, where should we it evolve to that uh, meet the art of this era at the risk of the distorting it? This debate, um, it's those uh, wanting to introduce Western painting into Japanese art against those who prefer to stay within Japanese artistic tradition for fear or of losing the essence of uh, their culture. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> so the the double mind. Here would therefore to be uh, to evolve an art that aims to be Japanese and reflects Japanese culture by borrowing Western concepts to make it correspond to the taste of the time. Um, uh, because Japanese objective was at the time uh, what uh, was uh, indeed to show its power, whether military or cultural. And because at this precise moment, Japanese want to be considered equal to the other Western powers, and therefore tries to shine on the international scene as Western nation already do. So the first, res uh, the first response to this problem was the yoga movement, a movement characterized by the acquisition of the Western painting techniques by Japanese artists. Uh, it's directly inspired by Impressionism and Romanticism, two, artist mo two artistic movements of the 19th century in Europe. The work of this uh, movement stands out uh, from the uh, Japanese style, established during the Edo period. And Kuroda Seiki was, the, the, was one of the pioneers of the, this movement, spreading this style in Japanese upon its uh, return of uh, Europe. 
some Japanese do not want this movement to represent Japanese art because it's not, it does not represent the Japanese artistic established in the, in the past. So in reaction to the yoga movement, the Nihonga movement was founded. This movement is the opposite of yoga, drawing inspiration for all Chinese art and Japanese art. Even if certain Western concessions are applied such as the mastery of the play of light or certain painting techniques, the style is intended to be Japanese to represent the Japanese nation. Um, two painters initiated to this movement, uh, so Kano Hogai, a painter from the Kano school, a very traditional school of Japanese painting recognized within Japanese art, and also uh, Hashimoto Gaho, also came from this was from the same school and was the first teacher for the next generation of Nihonga artists. So finally, uh, Shinhonga appeared, a movement started by Watanabe Shozaburo, nostalgic for ukiyo-e prints and wanting wanting to be to bring them back to life, thanks to new prints mixing Japanese and Western technique. The inspiration mainly came from UQA, but also from Western arts. In fact, this movement used the same technique as UQA, but adding adjustment using Western techniques. This is why the light effects are so well done and why the number of colors are greatly increased, offering greater uh, freedom to the artist. So, this one is my favorite. I find this prank to be detailed, especially in the shapes that the water can take. And yes. <laughs> so, uh, in the conclusion, as the Meiji era continues, Japanese art evolved, evolved, evolved uh, to become a symbol of Japanese culture. Its evolution has resulted to a multiple question concerning its nature, but also its form. To create a modern representation of Japan, it was necessary to use Western concept to evolve Japanese aesthetic. This type of double mind is applicable to, the, to other area during this era, uh, for example, army, government, government system, and school. And okay. Any questions or comments? It's a very good presentation about the Japanese art. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I want to ask about your point of view. So you said that like at the end it was it became a symbol and like you had to accept this change. But for you on other area, like on a global scale, yeah. is it important to accept the change or like you have to keep it on like some some areas and some you have to accept it? I I think it's important to change the Japanese art because in this in this time um, the world and uh, the world has been dominated by by Western nations. So it's very important to change the Japanese art because the Japanese art has ukiyo-e uh, as a part of Edo period, so the, an other period in the past. So I think it's very important. And what about the other area? It's the same. Uh, it's not. It's the same, but not with uh, Western power. It's about uh, Chinese power or Chinese power and Japanese power. Yeah, it, it actually sometimes gives us some a very serious chance to decide in which side or in which way we will go. Sometimes, even if um, uh, actually today, it is uh, sometimes it's very difficult to stick to the local culture or to go to the global culture. Because some, sometimes, if you are going to a kind of the mainstream of the globalization, you will lose some kind of the energy of the lo local power. You, know? you can see such a kind of the things in happening in Israel, in Israel or in the European area also. So I think that the, the big power is not the actually the mainstream. The small stream was some kind of such a kind of the very various variety of the Japanese culture is a kind of also the origin of the power, mm. giving some variety yeah, to yeah. the you know the culture. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comment? No, no. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Let us stop.